Today, I get to make a video I've wanted to make for years. It's about probably the most important Reason Rack device and probably the most influential device we've ever made. And what's crazy to me is that most early Reason users don't even know they're using it. I'm talking, of course, about the Combinator. The first Combinator debuted in Reason 3.0 and utterly changed the landscape of the Reason Rack and supercharged the Reason community into a sound-sharing ecosystem. And it's easy to take the Combinator for granted. I mean, it just kind of exists. It doesn't often call attention to itself. In fact, it doesn't even make any sound on its own. It's not an instrument, it's not an effect, and yet it enables the most powerful instruments and effects in the Reason Rack. So what gives? Well, let's remind ourselves what this whole Reason Rack thing is all about. The Reason Rack is where instruments, effects, players, and even advanced modular control voltage utilities can be combined to form custom sonic creations. An instrument like Friction might sound impressive on its own, but it only seems to get better and better and more unique sounding the more you build upon it with other Reason Rack devices. Put a distortion beneath it, maybe a delay after that, enhance it with some player MIDI effects up top, Give the whole thing a sidechain pumping vibe with synchronous, and our original friction patch is now an EDM song starter. That's all well and good, but what happens if I like the sound so much that I want to use it in another song? Well, the obvious but tedious way would be to repeat the steps. In a new song, I'd load friction, drag in my effects, tweak them to the same settings, bring in the players on top, and eventually I'd be back to having my sound. But whatever inspiration I was feeling would have been snuffed out long ago from the tedious repetition. So the Combinator arrived in the Reason Rack to answer the needs of portability first. It's a wrapper, a container. All those precision settings on a device, all that custom cabling that does amazing things on the back end, the carefully tweaked effects. If I select all those devices, right click and choose Combine, all of that gets wrapped up into a Combinator, which can then be saved as a single patch. In a new blank rack, perhaps even in a new song, if I load my Combinator preset, it's all there just like I had it set up. The devices, the settings, and most importantly, the sound. Take a spin through the Reason Sound Bank or any Reason Plus Sound Pack, and you'll see just how commonly the .cmb Combinator patch file appears. The Combinator is at the heart of Reason's biggest and best sounds, but it's not just a portability wrapper. Load any Combinator, and you'll see some knobs and buttons at the top of the Combinator's front panel. We'll be talking about these knobs and buttons for probably the rest of the video in varying degrees of complexity, but I want to acknowledge first that there's two styles of Combinator usage. There's music making, where producers, beat makers, songwriters, musical hobbyists are browsing and loading Combinator presets, searching for inspiring sounds that bring about new music. Then there's the other style of Combinator use, sound design mode, where music tech enthusiasts, synth explorers, or instrument designers are creating brand new Combinators, often from scratch, resulting in amazing sounding patches. This type of work with the Combinator can get really tweaky and deep. If you're watching this video and primarily concerned just with music making and finding inspiring sounds, we'll show you everything you need to know about the Combinator up front. Then we'll build from there and go even deeper for the sound designers. So let's get started with the Combinator by showing you the features you need to just make great music. Inside a Combinator, you might have two rack devices, or you might have 20 devices, and each one of those devices has a bunch of knobs, buttons, and sliders that determines your sound. But often, there's a few which do something particularly useful for shaping the sound of the Combinator preset which you might want easy access to. This is where the controls on the top of the Combinator come in. Front panel controls in the form of knobs, buttons, faders, or control wheels are set up to adjust the settings on the devices inside the Combinator. Let's take a really simple example. Here is a minimalistic combinator with just one dial on the front panel. And it doesn't take a genius to see from the label that this dial has something to do with the brightness of our sound. And sure enough, if I adjust the knob, we can hear our sound getting brighter or darker as I go both ways. Now, as a music maker, that's all I really need to know. See a control, adjust a control, hear a result. But if we click the Devices button to open up this Combinator and see what's contained inside, sure enough, as we adjust the brightness control at the top of the Combinator, you can see that it's been set up to adjust the Filter Frequency Cutoff knob on Europa. Now, this example is just a very one-to-one -one relationship. 
You might see this and ask, what's the point? If I want to control the filter, why not just open up the combinator and control the filter directly? Well, there's a few answers to this, but the simple one for now is that the combinator does so much more than this simple one-to-one -one control, which we'll see some examples of soon. But again, if you're the type of person who just wants to use combinators and not design and build them yourself, then all you need to know is that one, combinators house many devices inside, resulting in big and impressive sounds, and two, the controls on the top of the combinator's front panel are shortcuts meant for you to adjust and customize the devices inside. If we load up a more complicated looking combinator, there might be more controls, but the name of the game remains the same. Turn some knobs, press some buttons, see what happens. And this is the great thing about the combinator. If a patch designer took the time to put a control on the front panel, you know that by adjusting it, you'll do something to the sound. A well-designed patch will set expectations just from the labels on the controls. So it should come as no surprise that activating the chords button on Classic Poly generates chords from my single note input. And if I wanted to open up the filter cutoff, turn up the reverb level, or decrease the noise oscillator in my sound, all those controls are right there for me. So if you're only after finding great sounds and making great music, this might be all you need to know about the Combinator. Now as we advance a little deeper, it'll be up to you to find the point where you go, you know, I'm good, I know what I need to know to make music. Because from here, we're going to get more and more tweaky about things. Take a look at this Duo Filtered Saw Beauty patch and click the Devices button, you'll see the devices that make up its sound. We've got a scales and chords player sitting over top of a Europa synth with some effects. And it sounds like this. We could adjust the combinator front panel controls just like we've done before, but if we want to go deeper into customizing our sound, we could actually add our own device to the signal chain. Let's add a dual arpeggio player underneath our scales and chords player, and choose a preset, like up and down is a solid choice. With just one extra device, our combinator now has extra life to it, and it's getting ideas going for me. For the sake of flexibility, though, I might want to sometimes have this arpeggiator on as part of my sound, and sometimes I might want to have it off and just play chords that sustain. To do this, we can step one foot further into the world of combinator customization by adding our own control to the front panel that would enable and disable this dual arpeggio player. Clicking Editor opens up a new view for the combinator. This is where the combinator's power and complexity lie, but don't worry, it's not complex to learn, it's just capable of complex sounding results. The editor section defines all the behavior for the controls on the front panel of your combinator and how incoming MIDI notes or control voltage is routed to the various devices inside. Let's actually jump back to our first combinator to understand the editor. Remember this one? It's a single knob that opens up a filter on Europa. Let's click the editor. On the left side, we see a list of every device that's inside our combinator. The names here relate to the tape labels on the devices, so right now we see the echo delay listed in the editor as Warm Echo, which is the default name based on the preset loaded on this echo. If we double click and rename that to Delay Effects, our list will update. When any device is selected on the left side, we might see some parameter settings on the right side if they've been assigned to knobs or buttons on our combinator. Take a look when we select the Europa synth. Now the right side of the editor shows a parameter assignment. The first column lists which front panel object we're assigning to control Europa. You can see brightness here, which is the name of the knob on our combinator. The next column shows which parameter on Europa we're targeting with this control. Europa has several parameters that are available to us to target via combinator controls. The pitch bend range, oscillator engine 1's waveform shape, the rate of LFO 1, and many, many more. And this brightness control has already been targeted to control the filter frequency on Europa. That's why you see them move together. If we change that assignment to filter drive, now our brightness knob would be coupled to Europa's filter drive knob. But okay, let's go back to frequency. The last column defines the range of our combinator control. By default, the minimum position on our front panel knob sets the filter knob on Europa to its minimum value, and the maximum position sets it to the maximum value, which is why they move in perfect sync. But look what happens if we change this combinator knob's minimum setting. Now the top of our two knobs still match, but the lowest position on the combinator control isn't the lowest position on my filter. If I change the maximum range too, 
Now our front panel control is only adjusting a portion of Europa's entire filter frequency range. Now, remember back when I said that combinator controls aren't just a one-to-one -one control where one front panel control controls one parameter inside the combinator? We can use this brightness control to actually adjust more than just the filter frequency. Let's add another parameter to be controlled by our brightness knob. So I'll choose brightness as my source. For the target, let's select the filters of resonance. And for the range, we could limit the minimum and maximum like we did before, or we could actually invert the range so that as the brightness control is turned down, the resonance is turned up. One control on our combinator, and we've already set up a more complex type of synthesizer modulation where we can turn down the filter frequency while turning up the filter resonance and in different ranges so that the bottom of our brightness knob hasn't closed off the filter's cutoff entirely, but it has cranked up some crunchy resonance. Right now we've adjusted one type of range. We've said that the full range of our brightness knob will control a portion of the Europa knobs. But what if we wanted to define a portion of the brightness knob too? What if we wanted the top half of the knob's range to control the filter and the bottom half to control the resonance? That happens with the source range controls here. We'll make it simple to see by selecting the filter frequency assignment row and changing the source range to 50% and up. And we'll select the filter resonance assignment row and set that to 50% and below. Now watch as I adjust our brightness control. For the top part of the range only, our frequency is sweeping. Then it switches over and the lower portion of the knob's range is adjusting our resonance, which is still moving in that inverse direction we set up. So we've got one combinator front panel control assigned to two parameters inside, in differing and inverse ranges, being controlled by different portions of that combinator's knob. I mean, are you starting to see how creative you can get with combinator assignments? Let's go further. I mean, we're still only targeting one device in our combinator, just the Europa. Down at the bottom of my device chain is a synchronous effect set up to do a side chain style pumping. If I turn up the dry wet control, you'll hear it right away. We can assign this parameter to our same brightness knob on the combinator. To do that, we go back to the left side of the editor panel and switch from Europa to the side chain synchronous device. And then largely repeat our process from before. The source will be our brightness knob. The target will be our dry wet parameter. Now, let me quickly clear this assignment for a second to show people using Reason Standalone that they have a shortcut option too. If I go to my dry wet knob on synchronous, right click and select map to combi control, I'll see any knobs or buttons on my combinator front panel that I could assign this to. In this case, we have just one, our brightness knob. However you do it, manually or through this right click shortcut, we're ready to set the ranges just like before. We'll go to about 80% eh, of the dry wet balance for our maximum range. And we'll assign this side chain pumping effect to just, oh, let's say the top 30% of our brightness knob. Now we've got a really multi-dimensional control. We've got a range where our filter is fairly open, but not pumping yet. Then an area where the side chain really kicks in. As we cross over to the other side of the knob, the filter closes down. And then down at the lowest end, the resonance crunch comes out more. So one control knob controlling three different parameters across two different rack devices in differing portions of the control knob's range, and that's not nearly as far as we could take this. I mean, I could spend the whole night coming up with cool ideas for ways to use this one control knob to shape and warp my sound. In fact, already the name Brightness doesn't really work for all that this knob is doing. Let's double click its label to rename it eh, something like Crunch vs. Pump. You'll notice that our editor immediately reflects the change too. All right, now. That was a huge side tangent, just to introduce the concept of the editor. Now let's jump back to that other combinator we were talking about. Remember this one? We added our own dual arpeggio player to customize a combinator preset from Reason's Factory Sounds. And it changed our sound in a cool way, going from sustained chords to melodic patterns. 
but we wanted the ability to toggle the arpeggio on or off. And that happens where we've now gotten very comfortable together, the editor section. There's just one catch. If I select the dual arpeggio in our editor's list of devices and go to set the source, target, and range, well, right away, what control on my front panel do I want to use? Do I want the arpeggio to turn on or off as I rotate the amp release? Not really. Do I want the arpeggio to be hooked up to the same delay and reverb button? Definitely not. What I really want, well, actually, what I really, really want is to zig a zig ah, but what I want in this case is a new dedicated control that turns on or off my dual arpeggio player. The editor section has two views. We've seen the first one, where we assign parameters and behaviors to controls on our front panel. But if we want to customize the Combinator panel itself, we click the Configure button. Starting from over on the right, we've got global settings for our Combinator. We can choose how big it is, and we can do things like removing the custom background this factory patch has, change the background color, and we can even load our own grungy textures that we might find on Google to bring some custom texture to the look of our Combinator. But that's not why we're in the Configure section right now. We're here because we need an extra button, which happens on the opposite side. We can add different types of controls to our Combinator. For example, if I click to add a control knob, we get a new dial. We can position it where we want it, and we could choose to customize its look if we wanted to with several different knob styles and faders. But to turn on and off the dual arpeggio, we don't actually want a fader or a knob. We want a toggle button, a switch. I'll change the look to square blue, and I'll rename this switch to ARP. We can now exit the configuration and repeat a process very similar to what you've already experienced with our one knob combinator. Select the dual arpeggio player in our device list, add the ARP switch as our source, then set the target to on. When it comes to the range on a binary switch control, toggling a binary parameter like on or off, the minimum and maximum defaults make total sense, so we'll leave that like it is. Now if we click our ARP button, we'll see the dual arpeggio turning on and off just like we want. I'm going to add one more switch to our panel for the sake of reinforcement, but also to show you one more trick. Let's go back into Configure, add another switch, position it, we'll make this one square red, and exit. This one I'm going to set up on the Scales and Chords player. I'll select it in our device list, and you can see that we have one source there already called Chord Player, which targets the on button. We'll add a new row, selecting our automatically named Switch 6. And for the target, I'm going to choose the scale setting on my player. The extra clever viewers might be one step ahead in thinking, but the scale parameter isn't binary. There's more than two choices, so why use a switch? Well, straw man viewer that I just totally made up? That's a great question, and you're right. I could use a control knob instead, set it up to target the scale, and sweep through all the scale options on the player. But a switch lets me snap between two values. Let me show you what I mean. We've got switch 6 targeting the scale parameter. Now we'll use the minimum and maximum range controls to specify the two values we'll toggle between. I'll choose the minor scale and the minor pentatonic scale. Now that our switch has been defined, I can name it something like pentatonic. When the switch is off, my scale is set to D minor. When I toggle it on, the scale changes to D minor pentatonic. And just like we did with that other one knob wonder combinator, we could get creative with the idea of snapping between two values across multiple rack devices. Let's click on the Europa in this combinator. There's already a lot of parameter assignments in place which are assigned to the knobs and switches on our combinator. We'll add a new one using our ARP switch. We'll target the filter frequency cutoff, and just like we did for the scale settings, we'll choose two fixed values to snap between. I'll go with something kind of high as the minimum or off state for my switch, and something kind of low for the maximum or on state for this button. Now watch. When the ARP switch is off, not only are my chords held and sustained, but the filter is bright sounding. And activating the ARP switch also darkens our filter for a more bubbling sound. Okay. We have done a ton here already, and honestly, we're just getting started with the Combinator. We haven't gotten into key and velocity ranges, we haven't explored the control voltage inputs on the back side, or how those can be mapped to parameter controls just like knobs and switches can. We haven't talked about pattern devices, control wheels, I mean, there's just so much depth to the Combinator. You could get lost for hours or years building your own. And that's a good thing if you're the kind of person who loves sound design. In fact, you're pretty well equipped now to start experimenting with building your own combinators from scratch if you'd like to. 
just drag in an empty combinator from Reason's Utilities and start adding instruments, effects below that, players above, and jump into the editor's configure section, clear out the default controls, and start designing your own front panel with all the custom assignments we've been doing today or so many other options you could dream up. Those of us who are just as visually creative as we are sonically will have fun designing combinators with custom backdrops. In fact, the Reason community is regularly sharing some amazing sounding but also amazing looking combinators. Forums like Reason Talk have become hubs for discussions about and sharing of awesome combinator creations. If you've made it this far, hopefully you've got some great ideas for what you now want to try. We'll be using the Combinator a lot here on this channel because it shows up in so many great Reason presets and custom creations we make. I hope you'll join us for those, and I hope you've come to appreciate the power of the Combinator today. So now let's go make some new music, some new Combinators, and actually I'm gonna go make myself some new tea.